Turns out there are a couple of restaurants in Disney World where you can be simultaneously heckled and served some home-cooked eats. Let's talk about all things Whispering Canyon Cafe and find out if making the trek in these here neck of the woods is really going to be worth your time. Did that did that come off? That okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Unless you've stayed at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, you've probably never visited Whispering Canyon Cafe before. This rustic, rootin' tootin' table service restaurant is a family-friendly environment featuring a menu filled with hearty comfort foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're literally served in skillets. But don't think for a second you're just gonna be able to kick up your feet as your servers wait on you hand and foot. This wayward crew is gonna serve up some big portions and even bigger laughs. But is this off-the-beaten-path table service restaurant really worth your time, or is it a wasted trip? Let's venture our way through the woods and learn more about this Western themed restaurant. Hello, anybody home? Where are you, Whispering Canyon Cafe? Well, tucked away in the corner of Wilderness Lodge's cozy lobby is where you're going to find Whispering Canyon Cafe. Believe me, you'll hear it before you see it. The restaurant has an open concept layout, providing you with lobby views during your meal, which is way more interesting than it sounds, I swear. Wilderness Lodge's lobby is gorgeous. What with that indoor babbling brook and massive Grand Canyon-esque stone fireplaces and those totem poles and stuff. Now, Wilderness Lodge is a Magic Kingdom area resort, so a meal at this remote outdoorsy hotel could be a much needed break from your day at the main theme park there. To get to Wilderness Lodge, you can take a Disney bus from any of the parks or Disney Springs shopping district. You can also take a short boat ride from Magic Kingdom. But hold on a sec, arriving at Wilderness Lodge isn't all you need to do to eat at Whispering Canyon Cafe. You'll need to make that advanced dining reservation beforehand, which can be done 60 days before your trip kicks off. If you're staying at a Disney World hotel, your dining reservation booking window also includes the length of your stay up to 10 days. So make sure to mark your calendars for the day your booking window opens up so you don't miss out on any of your must-get dining reservations. Reservations for Whispering Canyon don't fill up particularly quickly like more popular options, like Cinderella's Royal Table at Magic Kingdom or Chef Mickey's or like Space 220, but you'll still want to make a reservation in advance just to play it safe. In case you aren't able to get a reservation, Whispering Canyon Cafe is offered as a walk-up waitlist dining option through the My Disney Experience app. The walk-up waitlist allows you the opportunity to eat last minute at restaurants that you might have missed the reservation window for. Though this feature is super convenient, don't solely rely on it for your must do restaurants. Walk-up wait lists aren't always going to be guaranteed during your visit, but it's nice to know you've got a plan B. So is this restaurant really as comfy and cozy as it sounds? Well, Whispering Canyon Cafe has the real rustic, outdoorsy, and all-around Western feel that matches those Wilderness Lodge vibes. Don't worry about needing to ditch your flip-flops and t-shirt, though. When it comes to dress code, there really isn't one. Whispering Canyon is one of those moderately priced, casual table service restaurants. It's going to be laid back and welcoming, but I do recommend packing your stretchy pants. The best way to describe the feel of this restaurant is if someone were to take the Lincoln Logs creation you made as a child and blow it up full scale. If you take a look at the interior decoration of Whispering Canyon, you'll find lots of cowboy decor, gold stars, and even light fixtures designed to look like they're made out of animal hide. But one of the best parts about this place are those sassy and playful servers delivering various antics and hijinks outside of what you might typically expect from your local restaurant. Now, fair warning, the entertainment from the cast members has been toned down compared to what we've experienced in previous years, especially since the parks reopened in 2020. However, there's still plenty of playful teasing going on that adds an extra layer of fun and engagement to your overall meal. The server's behavior isn't necessarily rambunctious per se, but it definitely offers a high energy and engaging dining experience that encourages you to relax and have fun. So don't bring like uptight Uncle Alan or anything, like he's not gonna get it. And to dive a little deeper into those server antics, I'll give you more of an idea of what these cast members are up to. I don't want to give away too much because that'd spoil the fun, but let's say your straightforward request for ketchup might not be as simple as you'd expect. You might end up with one or maybe two or three or four or five or six ketchups. And if you're planning on taking something to go, which you very well might be considering this restaurant's massive portions, your to-go box may be a little bigger than you were expecting. In the past, we've also seen stick pony races going on throughout the dining room. And if you drop your fork, you might get a replacement that's a lot bigger than you were bargaining for. So these antics used to be much more prevalent back in 2019 and prior to that year, but they're still fairly subdued at the moment. If you're here strictly to refuel with some cowboy grub, just let your server know you don't want to mess with the shenanigans and they'll pull back even further. No biggie. So 
So what's on the menu today? What can I say about Whispering Canyon Cafe's vittles? In short, it's A, extremely filling, and B, comfort to the max, and C, plentiful. However, the food has never necessarily been knock your cowboy boots off fantastic. Rather, it lives in a space between being decent and good. The restaurant specializes in all you care to enjoy skillets for meat eaters and plant-based guests alike. Some highlights of the skillets include smoked beef brisket, ribs, pulled pork, barbecued cauliflower, what? Yeah, and plenty of other meats, meatless options, and sides mixed in there. A lot of the options on the menu are meat heavy, but there are also plenty of plant-based choices that aren't just impossible burgers or portobello mushrooms. You can find plant-based options like barbecued jackfruit, herb brushed meatless chicken, and beefless tips. An all-time favorite from Whispering Canyon is the burnt end nachos. It's top a massive helping of nachos. There's a beef brisket and pulled pork that's both crispy and melt in your mouth soft. And of course, they couldn't be nachos if they weren't topped with a melty layer of cheese. So get those and you won't regret it. Well, maybe only if you don't wear your stretchy pants that day. We've also tried some pretty cool things for breakfast. A few months ago, we tried edible dynamite. Yep, yep, we ate dynamite. Okay, they were actually bright red cinnamon rolls rolled up to resemble sticks of dynamite and fully decked out with a wick of chocolate covered bacon. The dynamite was also topped with cinnamon candy and accompanied by a warm nut glaze. And these blew us away, pun totally intended, Bria, in both presentation and taste. If these cinnamon rolls aren't listed on the menu when you visit, you should ask your server about them just in case. Now, when it comes to dessert, this is historically the spot to eat an ice cream sundae out of a plastic cowboy hat, but those days are gone. Sad tumbleweed noises inserted here, but fortunately you can find a similar sundae over at Trails End Restaurant located at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort, which is just a boat ride or a walk away from the lodge. If you have your heart set on a dessert at Whispering Canyon Cafe, even after devouring all that food, the seasonal cobbler is a good pick if it's available, and I love the apple pie here. So how do those prices look? Well, considering the portions you're getting and the fact that the skillets are all you can eat, you definitely have the opportunity to get the most bang for your buck here. For the adults, the breakfast and lunch skillets are gonna be $25 and under $40 for dinner. Breakfast and lunch entrees range from $11 to $21 and dinner entrees cost between $20 and $40. For kids, skillets will cost around $15 bucks and entrees around $10. If you're not looking to splurge on a huge meal, the appetizers are filling on their own so you can get away with spending less there. If you're looking for a simple Similar style meal, Trails End at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort is a little bit less expensive, but definitely more off the beaten path and can be inconvenient if you're not staying at Fort Wilderness or the Wilderness Lodge. The price of the food at Whispering Canyon is comparable to other restaurants that offer all you can eat meals like Cape May Cafe at Disney's Beach Club Resort and Ohana at the Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Now, if you're looking to go even more in depth on the Disney World restaurant scene, think reviews of every single restaurant, tips on where to dine if you've got picky eaters, food allergies, dietary restrictions, the best DIY why snack crawls in the parks, how to celebrate a special occasion, and lots, lots more. Pick up a copy of our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining. This ebook is packed with over 800 pages of our team's firsthand expert experience advice on everything in Disney World. Best part, it comes with a full money back guarantee. So if it's not the right guide for you, just let us know and we'll make it right. If you want to check out the book for yourself, head to dfbstore.com, grab a copy of this guide or any of our snack or Epcot festival guides or book bundles, and use code YouTube for your discount. Big question though, is it worth it? Simply put, if you're looking for a casual, filling, fun, and good meal, Whispering Canyon Cafe will probably be worth it for you. And it'll be doubly worth it if you and your group show up here with big appetites and no stretchy bands. Plus, Whispering Canyon Cafe appeals to a few different palettes and preferences, whether you're a carnivore or herbivore. If you're in Disney World to experience unique things you might not be able to do at home, like the shenanigans from these cast members will probably be a lot of fun compared to the servers at your Cheesecake Factory at your mall. With that in mind, if you're there to just eat and don't want to deal with any of the antics, then it's probably not the spot for you. It may be overpriced and the food may not be exactly what you're looking for. Also, if you have some shy kids dining with you, they may not love all the heckling either. Compared to storybook dining at Artist Point nearby where you can interact with Snow White and co, this is more of a meal with character rather than a full-blown character meal. It also comes at a more affordable price point. Portions are the opposite from the prefix menu at Artist Point as well, making this better for your budget if you're looking to fill up and not break the bank doing so. Whispering Canyon Cafe is also a good temporary alternative to hoop de doo Review over at Fort Wilderness, which has yet to reopen since it went dark back in 2020, and you're still getting a hearty, comforting meal with welcoming and entertaining cast member interaction. Additionally, if you're looking for a break from your park day at Magic Kingdom, Wilderness Lodge offers a quiet, relaxing environment just across the water. Now on the flip side, if you don't have time in your Magic Kingdom day, or you're not staying at one of the monorail resorts, or it's just going to be a lot of extra hassle for you to get over to Wilderness Lodge during your trip, it might just not be worth all the struggle. It just might not be 
worth jumping on the struggle bus to get there. After all, like I mentioned before, the food is good and filling, but I haven't dedicated a whole scrapbook to it or anything. And it's just nice to dine there if you're gonna be nearby or if you're staying at Wilderness Lodge. Also, if you're thinking, wow, I can't wait to interact with these servers at the same level I do when I eat at 50's Primetime Cafe, then you might wind up disappointed. Again, though those silly server antics are still a big part of your experience here, they're not yet back to the level they once were before the resort's 2020 closure. Lastly, Wilderness Lodge definitely gives off those romantic vibes in this outdoorsy and peaceful setting, but Whispering Canyon Cafe is not gonna do you any favors by setting the mood. You're better off spending a little more over at Storybook Dining at Artist Point or spending a little less at Geyser Point Bar and Grill, especially if you grab a seat next to Bay Lake on a crystal clear day or evening. Now, a big decision that a lot of folks are making if they are staying at Wilderness Lodge or if they wanna go over there for dinner on their Magic Kingdom day is, do we do Storybook Dining at Artist Point or do we do Whispering Canyon Cafe? Well, if I had to choose, I would do Storybook Dining at Artist Point every single time. I love that meal. I think it's a really, really great character meal. It's good food. It's a gorgeous setting. And I think it's worth the money. So I would choose Storybook Dining at Artist Point over Whispering Canyon pretty much any day. So hopefully that helps with that decision. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest news coming out of Disney World, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. It's completely free. We'll send the biggest news straight to your inbox so you can be the first to know about Disney World's new restaurants, maybe the dining plan coming back, new ride openings, closing restaurants, changing restaurants, menu updates, price hikes, and so much more. The link is in the description below this video. Now, overall, Whispering Canyon Cafe is reliable, it's fun, and if you're looking to try something a little more off the beaten path, then try it out and play along with all the server silliness and you chow down on lots and lots of comfort food. But keep in mind some of those downsides I mentioned, which could totally kill the mood and make this feel more like you're lost in the woods than dining within them. Hope that helps you make your decision about Whispering Canyon Cafe. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. We've got a bunch of other Is It Worth It videos on a lot of these restaurants and hotels as well if you're making your decisions around your Disney World vacation. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.